Welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back with Sam for uh, the match reaction to Aston Villa 3, Luton Town 1, and it is 12 home Premier League wins in a row. Sam, how are you doing, mate? I'm I'm all right. I'm <laughs> good. Like I said last week, who who dare complain um, about, about the Villa at the moment? It's, it's kind of getting used to it now. It's it's just a bit scary. Expectations it's, creeping in, Rich. <laughs> it is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. I mean, we obviously we'll get into the game, we'll get into the kind of goals and, and one or two of the players' performances and, and, and what have you. But yeah, I mean, again, how dare we complain? Me and Kev were doing the match preview the other day, trying to sort of say, you know, we've got to be careful of this game, we've got to make sure that we you know, Luton could hurt us or whatever, but being real, there wasn't a there wasn't a chance that they were going to beat us. No, I think it, that's it's just PTSD, Rich. It's PTSD. Um, I, I think we've so often on paper in our lifetimes as Villa fans, on paper we should win um, every every game or so many of these games that come up and we're like, there's no way that this team's better than us. And we fail to get it over the line, the pressure of succeeding and doing well, these records, you know, 11 at home, 11 on the bounce at home before today, you know, that that, it builds pressure. And I I think one of the first things I said on this pod was expectation. And I think they know that the team know now there's expectations in in the crowd. Um, But we're just, we're standing all of that. There's pressure that comes with losing as well. But there's there's a different type of pressure that comes with success, and we seem to be taking it in uh, in uh, in our stride. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, comments flying in. I will go to the comments shortly. Guys, do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, two thousand six hundred subscribers, well over that, on the road to two thousand seven hundred. Um, and uh, you guys can help us on the road to three k. So like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I've pinned the membership link in the ch- at the top of the chat. So if you do want to become a member, just one ninety nine a month, less than a third of a cost of a pint to help support the channel. So yeah, please do uh, support if you can. That would be amazing. Um, so yeah, comments flying in. Uh, who have we got in the house? Rub uh, is in the house. Uh, Rich is in the house. Hi, mate. Rachel's in the house. Uh, good evening. Jake Renshaw's in the house. Hey, guys. Great to have you on board, mate. Uh, Michael's in the house as well. Uh, another great result today. Gary as well. Uh, hi, guys. Happy days. Absolutely. Um, Rachel says, a very professional performance. Not perfect, but we didn't need to be. Exactly. Um, Heralio is in the house, but feeling poorly. Oh, dear, mate. Bourbon is flowing, but Doggo is not being very sympathetic. Oh, dear, mate. Well, hopefully Villa and us will hopefully brighten up your evening. I think I think he said bourbon, mate. I don't imagine he's got the biscuits on the go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah, not the bourbon. <laughs> 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 uh, the bourbon brilliant. and bourbons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People wishing you well. Um, Jonathan in the house as well. I had I had absolutely no doubt that we would win comfortably today. As a Villa fan of 30 plus years, that's an odd and wonderful feeling. Yeah, that's what you've just said, Sam, you know. Um that uh, that PTSD. Yeah, we've got to, we've got to get out of it now. We've got to get out of it. Um Villa making me smile these days. It's been a while, says Heranio Gomez. Um Willie is in the house. Evening, guys. And Jonathan, yeah, hello, mate. Great. It's having been board evening all from CC. Um, again, great to have you in. Uh, Rich says 12 in a row. Amazing, Unai. Um, it's pinch yourself time. Exactly, exactly. Um, Gary Howlett said, this is how it feels to be a Man City fan, I guess. Um, winning all the time. 
Um, Michael says, Sam looks like he's been chilling to my Brazilian jazz collection. Um, maybe that's just the tiredness, mate. You told me about your um, early morning this morning. Do you want to share that with the with the viewers? Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of people have had it. It's just uh, obviously the clocks went back an hour and no one told my one-year-old son. So he was up at quarter to five today. <laughs> um, he's, uh, I said earlier, is 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 no one told his body about daylight saving. So he's um, no, he's not, he's not in tonight. But uh, I'm all right. I, I, I didn't realize. I thought it was because I looked so relaxed. And and so carefree because of the villa that I look like I've been there chilling to a jazz collection. And and for the record, for anyone who's wondering if why Rich might be a little bit laggy, it's because his internet's trying to keep up with the sharp, the, the the sharp lineup he's had and the trim. I don't know if you can see. Nah, he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking good, Rich. Looking good. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you. Um, where who have we got? Um, I've I've started a few comments regarding certain players, so I will come to them shortly. Andrew says most comfortable win we will have all season. Didn't have to get out of second year at all. Just gutted we couldn't keep the clean sheet for Emmy as once that golden glove at the end of the season up the Villa. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, per, um perfectly summed up there. Um, Gary says I think only three teams will get points at Villa Park this season. That is a big claim. Um, what I've got from Jim. Even in all, who would have thought we would have we would be here already, five points clear of the chasing pack. Can't wait for the next game. Yeah. I mean that that's amazing as well. Just just reflecting on that, Sam. 22 points from 10 games, five points clear of the nearest team, Newcastle, in sixth position. I mean, it's just it's just dreamland, isn't it? Yeah. Um you know, it's really funny because obviously last year and at the start of this season, it was all Deserby, Deserby, best of the rest type thing. And uh, I even saw today, was it after the Man City, Man United game, Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville having their, their weekly shouting match. And uh, Jamie Carragher was citing Unai Emery about impact. He was talking about Ten Hag and he was like, well, look at what Unai Emery. And I was just thinking, I was like, hold on a second. I was like, are we good now? Not just to us. It's not just us who realise how good we are. It's <laughs> it's everyone. Everyone can see that that you know the Villa are back in business, and um, yeah, it's just it's just it's just crazy. I mean, I don't I don't know what's going on. Um, last week against West Ham, I was waiting for the bubble to burst, and now I'm looking at the next two games in Forest and Fulham, and I'm thinking, hold on a second, if we can get six points there, we we can really challenge for the top four here. Like, who 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 says no? Look at Newcastle. They're either magic, they're either the best team in the land, or they're very mediocre. Brighton are not the team they were last year. I think they may have gotten rid of too many players this summer, um, even though it's worked out for them in the past. I don't know if they've had anyone who can step up to, to fill the boots of Casado and the rest. And and uh, and obviously, you look at the chasing pack, Man United, um, Chelsea, really, those are the other, only other ones that you think really would be competing with us for top five. And well, Chelsea, both shy Chelsea as well. can't get any. Yeah, Chelsea can't get any consistency. I, I think if we're if we're anywhere near, if we're still where we are at Christmas, just after Christmas, I think we've got a real chance, a real opportunity because we don't. We're so strong at home, and we will guarantee to pick up points away, even if we lose to the likes of the Man City, Man United. Even we'll still guarantee to pick some points up. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's 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 just a weird one. It's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint in the Premier League. You see so many teams flying at the start of the season and falling falling to the wayside as you know in, in the crunch time, um, or oh, oh, they hit a wall. And I just I don't I don't see what stops what stops Villa. Like today, Luca Dean went down. I'm sure we'll talk about the game in more detail. But Luca Dean went down for a bit, and I was like, oh, is he is he injured for us? And you know that was concerning. And I think. There are some positions where we have a lot of depth, some positions where we don't. But do you know what we really need to 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 really kick on? We need to give Unai Emery a new contract. We need to guarantee that he's not going to go to, I said it weeks ago, is anyone worried about Chelsea? Are they going to start sniffing around or, you know, Man United or, or someone in Spain or wherever? We just need to tie that man down because he's he's a he's a genius and he... Every single week, every single time I watch Villa play, he educates me about football and he educates the players and all the fans. And I feel like I'm, I know more about the game just by watching his team. So um, 
all, all the credit. We're going to talk about the players. We're going to talk about the individual performances, so on and so forth. But I, I'm not even sure on this podcast we talk enough about the impact the United Emery's had and just how good it is and how lucky we are to have him in the club. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we... We talked about it, I think, reflecting on a year of him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you think about managers now and, and if they hit that right club and they hit hit it at the right time, the impact that they can have, the likes of, you know, Klopp at Liverpool, you know, those years ago, um, Pep at, at City. Um, now you're looking at Ange Postacoglu at Tottenham. And you have to say, um, yeah. like, there's no doubt Unai Emery at Villa. Like, it's, it's crazy the 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 impact that he's had and and just i guess the maturity the um the systematic improvement of every player the different ways we can now play the threats that we've got it's it's everything it's everything about the whole club that is just phenomenal at the moment and you know the home record you know we were so inconsistent at home he just turned that around and gradually built it and built it and built it there's just so much to be pr- proud of i mean rich says there the biggest thing is the mentality of the lads unai has instilled into them is nothing short of incredible the belief the confidence is infectious and that just tells you everything everything you need to know yeah and i think it's um it, it it's one of those where we just uh even making you know making villa park a fortress is is one thing my big concern when Ian Emery came in the reason that i was uh, and I, I admit this i said it very publicly as well so there's not a lot i can i can do to go back and change that but i really wanted uh, pochettino um when gerard left um i wasn't i wasn't 100 sure on Ian Emery. and the reason being is because i was afraid we were going to play really defensive football we were going to play really like uh i don't know if you saw villarreal uh, when they got to the semi-finals of the champions league and the games that they played against liverpool it was i would argue it was anti-football we just sat you mm. know they were sat back and then you know against a much better team and and that's what i was worried that that unai Emery was going to bring he's going to bring winning games but really horrible football to watch and i just i can't i can't say just how much the opposite is we play such beautiful football like every week i'm in awe and i'm just like and i watched a man city uh man united game today and obviously man city man city are clinical and they're you know they're so polished and, and they're, they're excellent they're a class above everyone else in the world but i can honestly say i have more fun watching villa i just think it's it's more it's so fluid it's kind of it, it's more improvisational players are, are given freedom to do things leon bailey musa drb you know they don't always have to play that same system that tiki taka all the way up the field they, they play some really incredible stuff and and it's it's you never know what you're going to get from villa they've got four or five different ways to, to to hurt you and that's what makes us so dangerous is you cannot plan for villa because you don't know if it's going to be a long ball you know if it's going to be a counter attack or we're going to play in the middle or if austin mcphee is going to pull something out of a out of his ass like he always does like he did today <laughs> you never know what Villa are going to do and that's I think that's why we're so good at the moment yeah 100 percent. we'll get on to the game now I do want to just run through a couple of the comments um really randoms in the house that Unai is invested in Villa he will be here for years to come I really hope it's a 10-year reign like Fergie Wenger era um, and Gary says he, he needs a pay rise absolutely <laughs> Lizzie says we're closer to first than sixth which is mind-blowing um andrew miller says build unai a statue outside of the halt um and rich said yes sam it's the whole club the fan base he's awesome we are so lucky to have him um uh, again really random said unai is elite for me some of these big podcasts are saying he's not elite he certainly is yeah there's a couple of them there's um miguel delaney i think he's kind of dying on the hill that he's not elite but look who cares like it, it is what it is like we know we know what we've got here um, and I think sometimes people have, whether it's be because Villa are based in Birmingham, maybe because we had three years in the championship. I think some people forget what a big club Aston Villa are, but that's fine. That's fine. We can, we can, we can keep that to, to itself. Um, people don't realize we've won the European cup and all that, albeit 40 years ago. Um, but yeah, I'll come to some more comments a bit later around, you know, the, um, what we can what we can do for this season and stuff which we'll talk towards the end um so let's let's go into the game um so i i put my lineup out uh via fan hub um so obviously i had i got 10 out of 11 i went from ba- bailey instead of zaniolo 
Zaniolo got the start. Um, no real surprises, Sam. Or you know, would you, do you think would you have, would you have maybe started Bailey, or do you think it was kind of a toss up between the two? I I understood the thinking behind it that you know Bailey coming off the bench makes such a massive impact. I I did understand it. And I really like Zaniola, and I think he's really important in the first half. I know he got a lot of stick on Twitter, and people were saying that he's not good enough. Um, but he, he actually contributed to the build-up and to like making chances quite a lot. And I think he did it last week as well. He was he's almost got that Jack Grealish syndrome where he's the pass before the, the assist. Um, he did it last week when Ollie Watkins set up Dougie Louise. Um, you know, brilliant work by him to get in and then cut the ball back to Ollie Watkins. And I think today again, he was just. He does. I have said this a lot. He takes he takes really uh, uh, suspicious shots from from everywhere, and and he there are some things to his game that aren't quite refined. But you can tell he's just trying to he's just having a pop, um, and he's he's trying to create something. And I, I don't mind him. That being said, I I would have started Bailey before the before the start of the game. He's just he's just been on fire, and at Villa Park, he's you know he just loves it there. And he's I think for the first time since Leon Bailey's been at Villa he's had a, a, a sort of sustained period of playing well and I think his confidence is sky high right now and you can see it in the way he's playing and the way he's acting his posts on social media is you know just a smile on his face like did you see it the um the European game against Alkmaar when they were taking the photo the team... yeah in his coat yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> grin. and uh, I have to say I have to be absolutely chuffed for Leon Bailey Manny you know he's taking. Oh, he's he's brilliant. His voice. I love his voice when he's 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 such a small yeah. guy, but he's got such a deep voice. It's just, <laughs> it's just hilarious. And like, yeah. obviously, I love a bit of Jamaican like twang. It's just amazing. Like, and he's and he just seems such a nice nice person. But I th- yeah, I think it's 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 what I always say. You know, when when you have a Villa player not being not playing well and and being criticised, I always say, look, the best thing that could happen is that they prove us wrong. You know, because mm. you can't lose because then what happens is what's happening now. Um, you know, Leon, Leon Bailey, I, I would admit, and, and you know, Kev was giving him loads of stick, not because he doesn't like him, but because he wasn't good enough. He hasn't been good enough since he's he's joined the club in consistent periods. But now he's turned it on. He's got the confidence and uh, long may it continue, man. I'm I'm all about a bit of Leon Bailey. I want to see him. Him and John McGinn speaking patwa to each other on, uh, <laughs> on, on Instagram for, for, for a long time to come. Yeah, exactly. Um, Jonathan said, "I wants our thoughts. You obviously, you know, um, still quite impressed with Zaniola, but saying he seems to be struggling a bit to make his mark. Um, a lot of people, uh, Rich saying Zaniola is trying too hard. He needs to relax. Um, and same as Gary, um, but he got and he got booked as well. So obviously, you know, potentially that was the reason why he got sacrificed at half time." Rachel said, San- Zaniola reminds me of Buendia last year. Always trying, but will lose the ball often. When he settles, learns and gets the goal, he will be fine. Is that is that the thing for you? Like, he just needs a goal. Obviously, lovely setup by Watkins today, and, and he puts it wide. Um, you know, still a, still a fairly tough chance. Um, and then, obviously, the one that goes across the, across the goal and the keeper gets a block on it. Do you feel like, you know, there was that one against Wolves that was just agonisingly wide. There's a couple of others. The overhead kick against Drinsky. You know, do you, do you feel like that weight will be lifted off his shoulders once he does get that goal? I think there's a couple of things. I think a goal will help. I still say he's playing with confidence. He doesn't look like a man who's nervous to me. He's still trying all kinds of things and he's breezing past players and he's he is doing good stuff and he is contributing. I'll sort of make that point first. But I think we've got to remember about Zaniolo is on... On Friday, he was in Italy giving evidence against his, That's you know, true. his gambling charges and stuff like that. Like you, I think we we tend to have a habit of um, acting quite quickly when someone isn't, you know, isn't doing exactly what we think they they should be doing. I think he's fine. I think he's got a lot going on at the moment. I think the fact that he's trying to make things, I think he is trying too hard. I don't disagree with that. I think he's trying too hard to get that goal or to make his mark because maybe he can. Maybe he feels like there's, you know, the confidence that people have in him is being lost. He doesn't want to get pulled for Bailey. He's starting games, you know. He he, he doesn't want to lose his place, and that's what competition does in the team as well. Is it? it maybe it's, some people can't handle that pressure, but I think in general, I think once his betting stuff settles down, it looks like he's just going to get a fine um, because he's get, betting on a legal websites for poker and stuff like that but there's no football betting involved from what i understand so i think once that settles down and once he gets a goal and 
you know, starts playing consistently, I think he'll settle down a bit more in the game. But in general, I don't think he's been playing too bad. I think he might be a bit harsh. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I also think, and I don't know if many people have thought about this, is we've had, he's, he, he's obviously had his um, issues with having to go and give evidence. He's been away on international duty a couple of times. Obviously, a lot of other players have been out on international duty. This week, we don't have a cup game because if you think every other week, we've had either Europa Conference League or we've had um, Carabao Cup. So you're probably just going from training training for the match situation to then go travel into the game or, or tactics for the game, then another training for the match situation going into the game on the Saturday or the Sunday. We've now got a situation where he's got a full week of training with the team. Perhaps there's there's an element of actually just getting used to training with the players and getting used to playing with them because he's never really had that opportunity yet. Yeah, it's it's difficult. I just wait and see. There's nothing else we can do. If if Unai Emery feels like he's, you know, not playing well enough in terms of the contribution to the team, then he'll pull him. And that's the best thing about having Unai Emery is uh, we don't have to call for anyone's head or make it known. We just leave it to him. <laughs> All the responsibility of the past where we used to, you know, if a player wasn't playing well, we'd have to be really vocal about it and make it known. I remember when Ross Barkley started stinking up the gaff and, you know, we kept saying, look, you've got to get him out of the team. And we've at the park we've been very vocal about it now we just sit back and watch the gaffer do what he does yeah absolutely a lot of people a lot of people backing him um gary um i every team every good team has a playmaker and zaniolo could be the one who makes the difference mid-season um really random says i noticed he's the only player with his shirt tucked into zaniolo it's a sign of class he's italian <laughs> like man he's like stylish it. he's stylish <laughs> yeah <laughs> um ed said yeah lads up the F in villa had a bit of pre-match nerves with this one but this new villa get it done come on love it um and rachel said zaniolo has always had to prove people wrong throughout his career so he probably feels he has to do it again um and uh, Stephen says, hope Zaniolo stays long term. Bit surprised he started today with all the stuff going on. Maybe it's just a, f- a fact of, yeah, that's the reason, like k- get his mind off it. Um, do want to focus on uh, one player, though, who scored the first goal, uh, Mr. McGinn, um, doing his old uh, glasses celebration there. He's on a bit of do a it? goal. Can you... Can you do the glasses? I can't, like, I can't bend my arms like that. <laughs> I don't know, it's a struggle. I don't think you're it's doing struggle. it right. Yeah, I don't think many people are going to clip that one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess what's happening here, me and Richard, like that. Um, 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 but yeah, I mean, so there's two things. McGinn's on a rich vein of goal-scoring form, which is brilliant. I don't know. I wish I, I obviously wasn't at the game, but I'd have loved to have seen Austin McPhee's because I'm sure he would have been going crazy on the sideline at an actual... Um, an actual set piece routine that worked. Do you know what? <laughs> it's so funny. We've been watching for weeks all these Austin McPhee set pieces that <laughs> just gone absolutely nowhere. And then obviously the one today works. And uh, and I saw who was it? Dan Bardell on Twitter saying, "Oh, Austin McPhee shows his value once again." And I was just like, "Shut up, Dan! <laughs> just give it a rest." <laughs> Honestly, um, I don't know. I, I don't know. There are so many times with Villa do an intricate free kick routine and I'm just like and it goes nowhere and I'm like just put it in the box man just but at the same time um it worked today I think there was still a lot for him to do it was a nice step over I think it was Diaby who who let it let it run and it went to McGinn but he's still got so much to do he, that little drink took three players out of the game and he managed to find the bottom corner on his weak foot and it was just um it, yeah, it was a brilliant. It was a brilliant goal. I don't know how much of that was choreographed. I'm sure the step over was, and I'm pretty sure the rest of it was McGinn. If I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I reckon. I reckon he wanted to curl it in. It would have been to curl him with his left foot, but he improvised yeah. really well. Put it to his right, and uh, yeah. And then Lizzie says she looked over at McPhee. He was going mental. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lizzie, you've got to keep you. You. That's it. You're employed on Austin McPhee watch now. Yeah, you're McPhee. Watch. I, I want to yeah, know definitely. what he does when absolutely nothing happens from one of his organised <laughs> free kick routines. Lizzie, welcome to the channel, Lizzie. You're uh, your correspondent. <laughs> that's it. That's, yeah, that's your new job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Rich saying, smash the likes, guys. Please do. Let us know how many we're on. Um, we've got over 50 watching now, which is brilliant. So if we can get up towards 50 likes, that would be great. 
Um, uh, everyone's trying the McGinn glasses. Rob says he's tried it. He can't do it. Really random. Can't do it either. <laughs> I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Clip it before it goes. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, what we got here? Deco in the house. Hello, gang. We'll have to watch properly tomorrow, but up the villa. Plenty of time left, mate. Plenty of time. Um, our, our set pieces are getting showy, like entertaining, and especially when it works like today. Well, you've got to try something. You've got you've got to try something, of course. Um, and Rachel said she likes that we try and be inventive, just then just put it in the box. We aren't the tallest team, so it's wasteful in truth, especially it's against a, a team really like Luton point. as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good point, yeah. and I think I, I don't. I uh, just to clarify, I don't. I don't have an issue with one of the technical set pieces. On occasion, I just feel like sometimes there are certain situations where you like play it into the box is probably the best idea right now. Um, but yeah, I think variation is really important because I said at the, at the top of the show, one of the things about Villa that makes it so hard to play against at the moment is that no one knows what we're going to do. Um, we've got so many different um, different options and different tactics and the, the set piece routine is all part of it as well. So um, yeah, fair play to Austin McVie, obviously joking around a little bit, but um, brilliant goal from again. And, and I love the form he's in as well. Um, he wasn't just, it wasn't just his goal today. I think, I think we have to caveat all the praise we give out today by saying that Luton were not the best um, and not through a lack mm -hmm. of trying. Um, I just, I just think they lack, they lack the quality. Um, and I, I really like Luton as well. I think they're, I think they're a, a decent team, but we just had way too much for them today and we didn't get out of second gear. So, you know, I think it's testament to the boys and how good that they actually are that they didn't have to, but um, yeah, John McGinn looked quality today, but it's because he was, you know, that midfield was his all day. Yeah, absolutely. A um, lot of praise for, uh, for Pau Torres, so I'll come to that in a bit. I Am Lion is in the house saying we are in the title race. Um, fantastic stuff. Um, uh, let's talk Let's talk another player who, who um, we wanted to get, break his duck in the Premier League at home. Um, and by all accounts, was getting maybe a wee bit frustrated in the first half. But Mr. Moussa Diaby um, comes up with a wonderful finish uh, for the second goal. And then I'm sure you'll try and claim the third goal, although it was a Tom Luckier own goal. But yeah, great, great for him to get his, his first goal, Premier League goal at home in front of the Holt end. Oh, I love him, man. I can't, like, there's... I just there's no words for Diaby. I just love the way he plays. Like all of his goals are special as well. There's something about it. Like the technique today for his goal was just fantastic. I had zero doubts about Diaby. I think his quality is shining through. I said a couple of weeks ago, um, even when he had a little bit of a, a little bit of a quieter period um, in, over a couple of games, that he, he for me he's the best player we have um, in in the squad. Like I can see him in any team. I can see him in a Real Madrid team. I can see him in the Man City team. I can see him anywhere, um, DRB. So, uh, yeah, really, really happy that he's uh, he's at the Villa. And, and, yeah, it was a brilliant performance from today. It's what he needed. He needed to take the opportunity against against a team like Luton, get, you know, get going again um, in terms of not productivity, because I feel like he has been really productive over the last few weeks. He's, yeah. again, another victim of the past before the past, and he's been linking up so well with Ollie Watkins. And everyone was saying that last week as well, um, when we played West Ham, just how, how well DRB was doing. It was just not translating into goals and assists. So, um, yeah, I think he's uh, I think he's brilliant. He deserved his performance today, and uh, it's good for him to, to get the man of the match. I think he was man of the match, and he got the recognition he deserves. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you're right in what you're saying like about that quality, that extra little touch of quality, because the way he just finishes that goal, like, the you know, the way he finished the goal against Newcastle in the first game of the season, the way he finishes that goal today, like right in the bottom corner, first time, no doubt about it. He's just got that, I don't know, he's just got that technique, like to a T, like he's, he's, he's so on point with technique, it's brilliant. Yeah, he's just he's a brilliant player. <laughs> he's, there's not not much else to say about GRB. He was brilliant today. Great finish. Um, obviously, you know, so brilliant at running in behind, but he's also like very good at at shifting the ball just to the left, to the right, gaining a yard of space. There's loads of techniques that are, you know, I, I see a lot of people talking about um, uh, Doku at uh, Man City. He was someone that we were linked with 
And I just think, and obviously, you know, I've already given Bailey heaps and heaps of praise and I'm, I'm really happy for him. But if we had Doku on one side and DRB on the other, oh, I don't know, man, this this team would be would be near impossible to play against. But he's, he does well <laughs> defensively as well, DRB. I'm just, I'm a big fan. I think he's great. And I'm, uh, I, and I hope he, uh, I hope he continues his form. And I really, really, really hope he doesn't get injured. And I think that's my big concern at the moment with some of these big players who are having big performances is, you know, if DRB gets injured, it's, you know, it's going to be a long day. Oh, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gary saying, um, DRB is so team oriented. He's not greedy either. Um, Dale says with DRB, we make a huge profit if and when he leaves, which I don't eat, don't want to even think about. Um, no. Rachel saying, um, Diaby is elite. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Kamara's ball over the top to get Diaby in was fun. Uh, was love, uh, yeah, <laughs> love emojis from Ed. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, but yeah, I think I think it was just a, a control, like a control, totally controlled performance. Um, let me just share the stats um, with everyone. Um, just so we can uh, just so we can run through that uh, at while I'm there just hit that like button guys hit the subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel with 2000 nearly at 2700 which is crazy so keep us keep supporting us help us on the road to 3k that would be brilliant but yeah I mean looking at that um, Louise got man of the match on on fuck mob actually but um DRB got 7.9, McGinn got 8.2. Um, yeah, again, control performance. Um, Bailey came on at half time, got seven, over seven, which is great. But mm. statistics, like you say, Sam, 71% possession, 29% for Luton, um, 17 shots for Villa, six on target, five big chances, five big chances missed as well. Um, <laughs> who, who, who were they? Who were they? <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, can you hover over it and find out who they were? Actually, you know what? Can, can you, real talk, after you finish going through this list, can you go to the individual players and just check, you know, our forward players, Ollie Watkins and the such, and just see yeah. how many big chances they missed? <laughs> I don't know if it does it for the for the individual I game. Think if you click, if you um, click on the player, it might. Uh, here we are. Two total shots. Um, so Ollie had uh, 73% accuracy in passing, two chances yeah. created. Um, what have we got? Big chances missed two. Um, five touches in the opposition box. I think they, so he I missed think two of the five same. big chances. I, I think they um, were the same chance. I think that was when he was the one where he, he was a few yards out and then the rebound came back to him and he shot again and it was saved. Um, I, I'm jo all joking aside, I'm, I'm giving him a hard time on purpose, but... Um, yeah. I think Watkins was 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 he was decent today. He was like part of the build up. I think he, apart from that that flick up to Zaniolo, I don't think he did anything spectacular. But he was he was assured, and he he's actually gotten quite good. Ollie Watkins about at, at running um, running into other spaces and taking players players away from um, from the likes of Diaby and Bailey and stuff like that. So um, he's dragging players with him. People are giving him a lot more respect now, which is really useful. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what more comments have we got? Rod says it's crazy to me how coherent we look. DRB has, has found this role half 10, half pure Musa. I love it. I love it. Um, actually, I was going to, I was going to say that it, it's crazy because you mentioned about uh, Emery, about being that kind of almost that like anti-football with Villarreal and, 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 and setting up a team that, that plays in a certain way. And obviously, we, we're quite prescriptive in certain areas of the pitch with Villa. We set moves up. We, we, we play quite slow. But there are also certain times where the players can just go and express themselves, like the likes of Diaby, the likes of McGinn, the likes of uh, Bailey, um, Zaniolo, Watkins even. And, and, and it's almost like he's got that perfect balance of being that, that having that structure, but also then having that flair of players being able to do and express themselves however they want. Yes, I mean, again, it's something I said re earlier on. That's the difference between us and Man City. Uh, you can see Jack Grealish looks like he's playing with with shackles on. With he's got chains on his feet. Um, you know, afraid to try and take a player on because it's not in the script. Um, whereas Villa, we have our set moves and we have stuff like that, but we have players with ability and 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 a big part of this team's ability is to take a player on. You look at DRB. You look at the likes of Bailey, even John McGinn to turn, you know, turn a player and. And I think I think the idea is from from Emery is do what you want in terms of being creative. Just don't lose the ball. Don't lose the ball cheaply. If you if you try and do something, it doesn't work off. Make sure you've always got a second option. 
and you and you you play it back to someone else. And I think that's hey, there he is. I brought him in because he wants to do the draw for the um for the shirt. Are we doing the draw now? Mid Emery review. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. You finish your point, Sam, and then, then Aiden can come in and help. Nah, forget button. that. Let's do the draw. He wants, Let's he wants do the free draw. Th- he wants a free He's villager. got to go to bed, you see. He's got to go to bed. Go on, we, Aiden. We, we um we picked we put the names in, in the hat for the draw. So let me just get the we had I think we had pretty much a, over a hundred people enter, which is fantastic. So I've put everyone's name in there. That's the, it's their Twitter handle. So um Kane Sam, you weren't, Aiden, you weren't in the draw. <laughs> Why, well, hold on a second i subscribed and i took a screenshot why am i not in you know what can you put me in there just for kicks and if i win then you just <laughs> do it again i just want to know if i would have won <laughs> okay all right okay so, what is it your sam qd oh, just, put, just put sam yeah. well, we'll oh, there we go there we go <laughs> right you press the button can we see if aiden can do them again glasses you you won <laughs> you won <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'll take mine in a large. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're not. You're not winning. Right, do it again. <laughs> I think that's unfair. <laughs> right, that's we have <laughs> illicit AVFC. So this remember that joke. Ill- illicit AVFC. Well done for winning the that's competition. That's a joke. What I we won. Get in touch with you on Twitter, and uh, yeah, you can uh, you can get you can give us your size and everything like that. So we'll DM you on Twitter, illicit AVFC. I'm um, not Sam. That's not fair. You, I knew you, you were a... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, That's when he gets that. 20 goals, I'll get you one. No, yeah, that, that, yeah. We'll do that one. We'll do that one. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> that can't was fantastic. That. That's so random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Michael's, but that Michael can't believe it. Um, <laughs> I, I was there, you, you were robbed. There, Rich I was said, robbed. robbed. <laughs> you were robbed. You were robbed. Um, uh, well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just, just in terms of that freedom of it, 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 the players are playing with. And also quite a few people are, uh, as I said in the chat, um, praising uh, Pau Torres. Um, and he's all <laughs> VAR. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and Pau, um, I guess it, this shows, like, I, I know he got sort of, sort of thrust in the limelight when he came in against, uh, against Newcastle because of Ming's injury. But you can now see the real reason why Emery brought him into the team because he starts off so many of our attacks, those in- incisive passes, and he's proven to be, you know, a really, really shrewd signing. Yeah. And can I just answer Gary's question there? What's he saying? <laughs> Gary, I have never won anything in my life. That's the first time I've won anything, not even a scratch card I've ever won. <laughs> uh, Everyone's saying VAR. Like- <laughs> now that's all my lungs, all, all all my luck has run out. There. There's no point in buying a lot of ticket now. Um, what's the question? Uh, Torres. I'm, Torres. I'm thrown off now, mate. I've just I've, I've been robbed, and I'm I'm sorry. I've, Aiden's um, caused havoc. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Torres, man. I, he, he's he's brilliant. He came in. The league takes some getting used to. We're a lot more physical than the Spanish league. We're a bit. We're a lot quicker. We press a lot higher. Um, in the Premier League, it's um. It's a difficult league to just be thrust into, especially without Mings next to him. And I think Esri Conserves is a Rolls Royce of a player. We know that. Uh, shut up. Did he really? Mm. Wow. Um, yeah, Esri Conserves is a brilliant player. We all know that. But I think Tyron Mings is a bit more vocal and a bit more push you into your position. You stay there, cover. But I feel like this is the best thing that could have happened to Torres because he's had to learn the league the hard way. Um, he's been thrown into, there's a baptism of fire, there's no Tyro Mings to swap with him when he's feeling a bit down and a bit out and a bit bullied and a bit, you know, outweighed on on the pitch. He's he's had to learn, he's he's had to get to grips with the league quickly and and he's done it so so beautifully. He plays such lovely football. He's, he's never going to be the strongest defender, but he's reading the runs now. He's understanding that the strikers are going to come to him a lot quicker. He doesn't have as much time on the ball as he did in Spain. And he's uh, he was one of the most coveted centre-backs in the world um, this summer. And we were all talking about what a, what, what a steal it was that we managed to grab him for under 30 million quid. And, and he's showing why now. He's still that player. He just needed time. And I say the same thing about Zaniolo as well. Like, these players are 
you know, they, they don't instantly become bad players. They just, they need some time to adapt. And Pau Torres is, is so important for us going forward in terms of starting that attack. And some of the long balls he plays over the top and his vision and his ability to play a ball, like, you know, you think of the best centre-backs in the world and that that's their skill. That's what they do is they, they're ball-playing centre-backs. Very good. And, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm a big fan of Pau Torres. Uh, he, can, he can definitely stay. And I'm really curious to see if Mings was back tomorrow, who, what happens to that centre back pairing of Concer and Torres? Who who mm. gets dropped? Does Mings mm. not come back in? What? I don't have the answer. It'd be interesting to see what everyone else thinks. So whack it in the comments. Let's see what you know what everyone thinks. But I've I've honestly I've got no idea. Mm. It's a, it's a great question. Great question. Maybe we'll get Max to clip that up and put it out and see what everyone else thinks as well. But yeah, get get your thoughts in the comments. I'll read them out shortly. Um, Gary says, Torres played his get best game for me. Um, Jonathan says, uh, Torres is going to get better and better. He is a br- brilliant footballer and his defending will improve as he gets used to the league. Picks better passes than most Prem midfielders, an elite level player. Um, really random. I might have just frozen slightly there. Um, really random says, Pow is looking quality. We hardly notice Mings is out and Pau looks like he does less work, but he he, he doesn't. It's just good game control. Um, loads, of, loads and loads of comments coming in. Uh, what have we got here? Really random says, I love that raking ball he plays. His stance and everything looks quality. His movement, I mean, he's just a silky player. Um, uh, Gary says, um, does Mings actually get back in if he keeps improving? Um, yeah, exactly. Rachel said they will be rotated depending on the opposition. Um, a good problem to have with Torres and Mings. Uh, what else have we got? Michael says you can't break a settled defensive partnership up. Um, I agree with that. Really random says not sure he does. Yeah. Uh, Jim says long lay would go back to Barca and Mings takes his spot in the Euro team. Um, Mings is. The, I thought we signed we signed long lay before Mings got injured. Catcher. Sorry, go on. Mm, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, we might we may well have done. I can't remember. I think we signed long lay before Mings got injured. If I'm being honest, maybe not. Mm. I don't know. Uh, but I, do you know what? I actually quite like long lay in the. I, I, I yeah. don't know if I, good I wasn't on the. I wasn't on the the, the post post match for the Europe, but. It was very good. Long lay was after, says Rachel. Yeah, cheers, Rachel. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, but you forgetting Diego Carlos as well. Like, I mean, we've got we've got Torres, Conza, Carlos, Long lay, and obviously, obviously Mings. But I, I don't think Mings is going to be back till next season. Do you think? I think yeah, towards the end of this season or next season. But I, you know, you think with Ty's age and his how serious an injury it was, it's, it's a hard one to come back for it. You know, I, I was th- I was thinking this as soon as he got injured at Newcastle. I was like, is he, you know, is is he gonna? Is that his last game? Was that his last game for Villa? Um, you know, uh, when he comes back, are Villa in a place where we've outgrown Tyrone Mings? I don't know. Um, I, I I love Tyrone Mings. I I think he's so important to have around the team and the club. And um, I found it really interesting actually because Emmy Emmy Buendia, since he's been injured. Everything I see on his Instagram, like he's either he's either at the game or he's watching the game on TV. He's very vocal about he's still around the club. He, you know, you know, Emmy Buendia is still in the picture very much so. And I, I, I haven't seen anything from me. No, I, was, I said that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. He's um, he's an important player. He's, he's kind of like he's, he reminds me of that James Chester. He's a you know that that, that trier who sacrificed it all for Villa. He's put everything on the line and. Uh, I hope he comes back. I hope he hope he competes. He's he's definitely he's got a place at the club in one way or another for me. Um, but yeah, it's a tough one. All you can say is Pau Torres is brilliant. Ezri Konza, despite a moment of madness today, <laughs> br- br- brilliant. And I think it's right that he's keeping Diego Carlos out because from what I've seen from Carlos, although he's a very good player, um, he's he's not as good as Konza or. Um, or Torres, which is all credit to Conser, for being honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you say that was the only blot on the copybook of today's performance? The, the, the own goal. Yeah, it was a bit of a strange one. I, I put, I put it in the, I put it in the chat. Um, 
uh, in our in our WhatsApp group earlier, I thought it was a bit strange that Martinez dived for the ball, and obviously it, came, it hit the po- hit the hit the um, crossbar and and came back and then hit Martinez on the back. So it's technically, and I mean, it was it was you know he got too much on it. It's very obvious. I think he got a bit of contact on the ball than than he thought Esri Conser. But I just found it so strange that Emmy dived for it um, mm. when he could have just. You know, like put his hands up and call it. I feel like, but I haven't seen it back. If I'm being honest, I watched it in real time and I haven't, I haven't really seen it back. But it, look, it it was a silly goal to concede. And I think after that, there was a bit more pressure. Um, you know, for the last five, five, ten minutes, it was a bit more. Um, it, you know, it was a little bit more on the game than they should have been. But for me, it was. It's just silly. I mean, yeah, we would have loved a clean sheet. Yes, it takes one away from our goal difference. Um, but in in truth, I think we 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 really just focus on the collective results and those individual things like the golden glove and you know golden boot, whatever. I, I don't care about them. I just I want the team to win, and whatever happens in happens. But for future games, stuff like that, it's it's a great game to learn that lesson in. You don't want to learn it against yeah. Man City. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, few people saying. Um... Obviously, yeah, Rich saying Emmy must be furious with Conte. Yeah, he would have wanted the clean sheet, I'm sure. Yeah. But a few people saying Dendonka, um, not impressed at all. Uh, Andrew says, put Dendonka on the next tram from Moore Street back to Wolvo. Oh, <laughs> my God. Says, did you see what he did, Dendonka? No, mate, I haven't I haven't seen much of it. Oh, but yeah, there's, right. there's I'll explain to you what he did. Yeah. He, he's on the edge of the box. He's on the edge of the villa box. So much time. He's got options in four different directions just pick one and he just freezes and he just stands still he gets dispossessed on the edge of the box um the the Luton player has a shot and luckily Pau Torres sticks out an ankle and it clips and goes over and I think this was at 3-1 and I was just like what the hell are you doing he just froze he just and there's so many options it's not like he was passable in a tricky spot it was just it was just a moment of madness and he is Mm. off the pace he he's not good enough and I would rather see Eric Bonham play there than, than. Uh, yeah, great to see him on the bench today. Yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant to see him. But I, I would yeah. rather see him play than Dendonka, for being honest. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those, isn't it, where it's kind of difficult for Dendonka, you know, admittedly, where he's getting ten minutes here. I think he got what what five or six minutes today. To, he he seems like a player who kind of needs to get into the pace of a game. Um, very much so. But then you think, well, if you're giving someone five or six minutes at the end of the game, give it to give it to Eric Bonham, give it to a young player, because at least they will, you know, really appreciate getting getting on the pitch. Is is, is Dan Duncan really going to appreciate getting five minutes at the end of a game? No, nah, I mean, he, he was really fit for purpose last year, Dan Donker, but I've said this previously, like, as, you know, as the quality of the team increases, there's always going to be some players who get left behind. And it's yeah. just, you know, and he's just, he's just a victim of it. He was... Um, it's not the first time he's been caught out being a bit slow. Um, I, look, credit to Den Donker. You know he's a Villa player. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and give him, you know, uh, give him shit for for you know not being in, in in the same speed as the game for being on for a couple of minutes. But I think it's becoming more glaringly obvious that he's he's not at the quality of the rest of the players in the squad, and he's uh, probably one that that you'd look to move on whilst he's still got some sort of value in, maybe either in January or in the summer? Well, that's it. You can see, you could see like a, like a lower level Premier League team kind of taking him on loan in January with a view to signing him. Um, and then, yeah, if Eric Bonham can keep fit, then you, you would imagine that he would be the that that kind of backup yeah. defensive midfielder. So, yeah, and a yeah. couple of people saying the similar thing for, uh, for Traore. Well, you see, you see what like Philogen Bades has been doing at at Hull. I don't know if anyone's seen his his goal this weekend, but oh, he's, he's goal. playing some lovely stuff. And I just he played really well in preseason, Philogen Bades, and I was a little bit gutted that that we let him go. Like, where we, whereas we have um, Triore on the bench, who don't get me wrong, you know, he played his part last season. That goal against Leicester and everything he's done, but I just feel like I feel like there is a place in this squad for some hungry up and coming kids to to get to get at least on the bench or get like that five minutes at the end of the game. I think Eric Bonham's one of them. Um I thought Archer was one of them and um obviously we said no to that because we have Duran but I don't know where Duran is anymore. He was yeah, on the bench today. Strange at the minute with him. Yeah. 
And I think Villa Jimbadez would have been a good option as well. But um, it's good for him to go out and, and play football regularly. And I think that's what these kids want and what they need is to go and play football. So, um, uh, yeah, but it's I think, yeah, we, we talk about the team. There's a couple, Matty Cash as well. I really like Matty Cash and he's, he, he's, a, he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's a player of the quality of Villa. But I think um, I think there's an upgrade to be had there. And I've seen a lot in the comments as well. I think it would be, uh, we would be remiss to not talk about Luca Dean and his impact on the team this season and the way he stepped in for Alex Moreno because he was fantastic again today and he's been fantastic all season and when he went down I was I was bricking it because I was like he's he's irreplaceable at the moment um so yeah long long live Luca Dean and and uh yeah well done to him for fantastic performance again today and and, and real and real consistency you know he's played a lot of games um you know back to back so that shows that fitness level that he's got as well um but moreno i think he's close i think he should be back was it after the international break um, what do you maybe, do Rick? maybe do you play moreno do you play moreno or do you keep dean that's a tough I would, question I would, I, would, I would keep i would keep dean you're in for now um but i think the games are going to come thick and fast in in december so i think there would would be some rotation but you don't want to you don't want to just rush um, rush Moreno straight back in because he's um, we know how kind of temperamental his injury is. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, Jonathan completely agrees with you on cash. Uh, good, but we can improve. Gary Sardinia back to his best. A lot of people talk about Neto. Uh, it would be brilliant. Um, but yeah, a couple of qu- we, we, we will come to that question. Uh, Andrew asked a question about signing in January. We will come to that in a second. I just wanted to, I just wanted to finish up with the, with the game today. Was there anything else that you wanted to cover? Anything else that you wanted to? We haven't maybe any players that you want to cover or just general feeling about the club, like moving on to you know Forest next, Fulham next. You know. Yeah, I mean, I said it already. I think those two, those two games are so crucial, so important um, for us to to really be in with a chance of of you know pushing that top five and you re- remember if things go our way this year we can qualify for the champions league in fifth so being in that top five is just so important putting ourselves in with a chance i think those top four um arsenal spurs man city and liverpool i don't know they just don't lose like <laughs> we've got two teams in the league after 10 games who are unbeaten one with eight wins and two draws and the other one with seven wins and three draws it's 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 a you know it's a really tough time. I think in previous years, years gone by, last year maybe, or or the year that Leicester won the league, I think we'd be top of the league at the moment. Um, I'm walking it, but um, all I can say is is it's so important for us to keep pace. Um, you know, this is like the start of a marathon. You don't have to be out in front. You just have to be in the pack. Um, don't drop silly points. Have to beat Forest. Have to beat Fulham. Um, and then when it comes to that, what well, we've got. Arsenal and Man City back to back in December or something like that, or November, yeah. sorry, and Spurs. We've December, got November. December. Yeah, Spurs we've got in Spurs November, in November. Yeah. Those are the games where if you're winning all your other games, they're, they're almost a free hit. So, you know, let's see if we can go get something away at Spurs or, uh, you know, uh, against Man City or Arsenal. Those are the games where you like, we've done our bread and butter stuff. We've beaten the Fulhams, we've beaten the Forests and the Lutons and we, then you go and take your chance on those games and that's how you, you push for a top four for a team like Villa at the moment. So, yeah, uh, same old, same old with the team. Midfield, brilliant. Kamara, brilliant. Dav, uh, Douglas Louise, brilliant. It, just really happy watching the game today. It's 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 such a breath of fresh air to, to watch Villa and just be like, just I'm watching with a smile on my face. I'm just laughing at the skills and Pau Torres flicking the ball over Townsend's head and just you literally you're literally going, who's going to score today? Yeah, it's, you, you, that's what you're doing. You're going, who's going to score for us today? You're not thinking who's going to actually get have a shot or yeah. will will I don't know will back in the day it's like will Grealish be able to win the game for us or will so and so be able to actually perform? <laughs> now it's like you know McGinn, Bailey, Diaby, Watkins, Louise. Whoever they can else. afford to have off games. Yeah. This is yeah. the difference, Rich. It's before if Greenish had an off game, the whole team had an off game. But yeah. if, if John McGinn, and he has had a few this season where he's had an off game, you've got four or five players waiting to step up and waiting to shine. And I think, uh, you know, 
we look at what's happening at the shite down the road with Wayne Rooney, <laughs> Birmingham, the Blues doing another Blues classic, getting rid of a manager that's actually doing well. It, do you know, if you were a Villa fan and you were in charge of Birmingham City, that's exactly what you would have done. You would have got rid of the manager who's actually got them playing well and you'd bring in Wayne Rooney, <laughs> who doesn't have the best track record as a manager, and you'd go and you'd, you'd take him from being promotion contenders to relegation contenders, and and you know you just count count your lucky stars that we're Villa fans and we're and we got chosen and we get to watch this brilliant, amazing football and have the whole country talk about how good we are and the shite down the road can uh, enjoy being mid table in the championship. Hundred um, percent. Just before we get into a couple of final questions uh, for tonight's show, um, guys, do show your appreciation by hitting that like button and hitting that subscribe button. We are well on the road to 3K, almost at 2,700. Um, the support over the last week or two has been amazing. Um, so yeah, please do like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you do want to become a member for just 1.99, then the, the the link is pinned at the top of the chat, or you can hit the dollar sign and donate. Um, hold on a second. Channel or become a member. I have a question. Adamski said he that he won eleven grand on a lotto the other day. Is he, he did. subscribed or not? Is he, he a member? He is subscribed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he is a member Adamski. as well. Yes. 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 He is. Yes. He is. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Spending your money wisely. Um, That's why. Like exactly. To see. Exactly. He is. He is. Um, Gary says we're like a runaway train at the minute. Uh, so yeah, that just it's just crazy at the moment. It's absolutely crazy. But yeah, do you want to come up to a question from Andrew? Um says, Rich Sam, who do you think we will sign in January and what positions do you think Una will want to strengthen in? Just before you come to that question, a few people in the chat saying um uh Molina is linked. Um uh, I'm not right too back, sure yeah. about uh, who he is. Bayena um, also linked as well. I covered him on one of the transfer talk shows. I do want to do a little bit on Molina um, when I get chance. Um, and obviously, who's the is it? Uh, who's the one that we we look we pretty much Acuna. Acuna. Acuna is one who we're we're Very potentially strange. almost done already. I, but that I, seems I like a strange one. one. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, um, I, I was that's what was going to be my response. It looks like we're going to sign Acuna, but. The only thing I think is that he is going to sell Dina in January and he's going to bring in Acuna. But I just, I, I like I like Dina. He's he's got so many assists this season. He's integral to the team. I don't know. I think if it was up to me, this this is who I would sign. I would sign a right back, whether it's Molina or someone else. I don't know if Molina is better than Cash. I wouldn't buy another right back. Well, I might Unless buy another right back for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, if Matty Cash gets injured, then we've got a concert playing right back for the whole season, which is not where he shines. So a right back is important. I would like a backup goalkeeper because I'm not comfortable with Olsen in goal at any point, not even in a friendly. I wouldn't have him in goal. Um, so another goalkeeper. And then I've seen, and I think we still need a striker because if, if Ollie Watkins gets injured, hear me out before anyone starts going on about me being, uh, being biased or not. If Ollie Watkins gets injured and John Duran's on strike or he's homesick or he's fighting with Emery or whatever the hell's going on, you know, we need a striker. And then again, January's not the market to make wholesale changes and big, big purchases. But I've seen the links to uh, uh, Pedro Goncalves, uh, if that's mm, how you say it. Some people bit. saying that in the chat. He's brilliant, isn't he? He's a good little player and he's, he's, We're he's talking worth 80 people. million, though, 80 million euros. Yeah, get the well, they're making money from the lower, lower. What uh, what the hell do they call it in the in the whole the whole suite? The, oh, the the lower ground. The lower ground. Yeah, they're making them. Don't worry about that. They'll be. <laughs> and I don't mind them. I don't mind them ripping up the whole end and doing that. If they're going to bias these quality players and increase the, the season ticket prices. This is what I want to see. Um, and I just yeah, I, I'd love that. Just a, a, I would love a marquee signing, a Nico Williams, a, a Goncalves, just someone special. But I, if I'm being honest, I think in January you're more likely to get just shoring up the likes of the Dendonkers of the world and the Molinas and the, you know, not the most exciting players. No one spends big money in January unless no. you have to. No, unless you have to. And then you pay over the odds um, because players yeah. keep, like, players will keep their, players and agents will keep their options open unless an agreement has been done, you know, and it wasn't been able to done in the summer. <laughs> and Gary's that saying, laugh. <laughs> Gary's saying, get a Damski to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good, Gary. 
yeah, I think yeah. I think it's and, hard for Unai Emery. How does he go and he justify? How does he justify? Oh look, I need seventy million spent on a player in January when yeah. they're like, hold on a second, you're fifth in the league, you're looking like you're going to walk the Conference League, which is these are our goals for the season. We mm. we're not going to drop set. We wait until summer and we do something more wholesale. But um, yeah, sorry, who was asking about a striker? Uh, uh, Andrew asked the question, uh, an original question: What striker? Aren't there a couple of strikers in the German league that are absolutely flying at the moment? Yeah, and um, they've got release clauses of like seventeen million or something. Uh, Guriassi, I think his name is. I can't. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right. And there's another one that I, I mentioned at the start of the season who had. He's got ridiculous numbers. He's like fifteen and eight or something like that. Um, top scorer in the Bundesliga. Yeah, there's some options. There's there's definitely some options there. Um, but I think uh, I just seen a shout at one of the comments says Sancho on loan, and I tell you what, I would take Sancho That's on loan. That's not a bad shout at all. I would take it in yeah. a in a hut. There's there's laughy faces after it, laughing emoji. So I don't know if he means it or not. But I'm actually a hundred percent on Sancho. Like I think he'd be brilliant. Um, he's lost his touch, but if you remember him in the Bundesliga, he was he was different class man. He was he was mm. so brilliant. So I, I I would like to see Sancho even if it's on a loan with an option to buy. So we see how he gets on for six months. But he's he's a kid. J- Jaden Sancho is not like getting Jesse Lingard on loan where he's 30 years old and he's washed up and he's got a bad attitude. I think Ten Hag has a way of, of isolating players. Um, and he's done that with uh, he's done that with Sancho. But I think Unai Emery could really get the best out of him. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, what else have we got? Um, Rachel said she wouldn't take Sancho. Uh, Mark says, no. "Evening, fellas. Yep, uh, uh, Mark, you uh, you were the good luck charm as well. Uh, going to your first game in years, which is amazing. I hope your daughter enjoyed it." Oh, well done, um, Rub says, "Girassi is injured, though, unfortunately." Um, Adamski says, uh, "Grealish on loan to see if he's good enough." <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, nice, he might, nice. they might he might have had the talent battered out of him by Pep. You know that that crazy stuff that he does. He and the thing is, like, I hear Jack talk about Man City and Villa, and he's like, "Oh, at Villa, I could play how I want, and you know, mm. I was, I could do." And it's like, Jack, come on, mate, you, you did all right at Villa. Let's not, let's not, let's not slag us up too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, don't get me wrong. I'd, lo- I'd love to have him, but it's it's one of those where look where we are now, now in terms of uh, comparison. It's it, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Um. I, I thought of something. I can't remember what I was going to say around uh, around players. Oh yeah, what I was going to say was, don't forget. Um, oh great, I'm, I'm glad she enjoyed it, Mark. Brilliant stuff. Um, Ramsey is to come back, say probably December. Moreno, yes. we've talked about. That that's the old cliche, but those are two key players um, in our team. That will be that will be huge if they can stay fit in Jan- for January and the the second half of the season, which almost potentially negates the the need for. I know you talked about striker and right back, but Ramsey as an option in in, in the forward attacking areas of midfield is is absolutely huge for us. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's what I love about Jacob Ramsey. He hasn't played all season. He comes back twenty minutes against Brighton, scores a wonder goal, and gets injured again. We never see him. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's he's a brilliant player, Jacob Ramsey, and he's he's got a place. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget about the players that we've got coming back. And we don't know how soon Emi Buendia will be back as well. So when we talk about you know options up, you know, in that forward line, um, obviously we have to factor that in. But yeah, I think I think the right back, the goalkeeper, and that that left winger. I, I never really loved Jacob Ramsey on the left. Um, no. Uh, so I thought he was a bit restricted when he, he's better at driving through the middle. And I, I ju- the only thing I would say is you've got John McGinn in that role now of driving with the ball, and and he's. But I don't know. J- Jacob Ramsey's a special, special talent. He I'd gets you so much happen. territory. Yeah, yeah. He's he's, yeah. He, he's he's the running back. He's the wide receiver. And yeah, in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. American yeah, I love football, it, yeah. he gets yards. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's. But yeah, he's. Uh, I'd love to see him back. I still think. Look. We can strengthen that. You've got the likes of Traore on the bench. You've got, you know, there are players in the team where it's very hard to upgrade at the moment because we're playing so well. But I think if we talk about what the actual quality is, there's there's still room for for improvement throughout the squad. Um, maybe not the first team so much, but in throughout the squad, um, I still think obviously Ollie Watkins is the only real striker with Duran 
you know, MIA. Um, so I think, and I still, I, I still believe, I haven't changed my beliefs on Ollie Watkins because he's he scored in four games of the season. I, I still feel like he needs competition. I still feel like when he, if, if I say when, most people would say if, I say when he goes on his quiet period in the season. You need to have another option to bring in. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I would still go get a striker, uh, someone who can really push Ollie Watkins, and he signed his contract now, so I don't have to worry about him buggering off. Bring in some competition, um, and see how see how that goes. Do you know who I like? Who was it? I saw uh, what's his name? Uh, Cunha, Cunha at Wolves. Yeah. Uh, he looks really good. Great running like with him. the ball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and people strong, like who strong runner doesn't finish though. Can't finish. Nah, I, I haven't seen too much of him, but there's just players like that. Like, you know, you could get, I think Villa are a big enough draw at the moment to bring players in and say, look, you'll have to compete for your place. Yeah. But hopefully this time next year, you'll be playing Champions League football. Um, and I think previously people have said, oh, well, who will come in and play second? Who will, which good player will want to come in and play second fiddle? We've got them all over the pitch. We've got, you know, Leon Bailey's, we've got Yuri Tielemans who thought he would come in and come off the bench and with a good attitude, which he's, which he's got at the moment. Every big team, every good squad needs squad management and rotation and, and good players on the bench. You cannot just have a good first 11. So, yeah, let's boost the squad up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Before we finish up, um, a quick quick tribute to uh, Charlie Aitken, who I, I I was driving down to my fat folks today and then like clicked on, on Twitter and, and saw that uh, Villa had kind of posted that he, you know, sadly passed away um, today at, so, at some point. And at one point, I remember I remember um, when I was a kid watching the, I pretty much watched it every week, but the official history of Aston Villa video. And um, he was obviously heavily, heavily featured. 17 years at the club, 660 appearances, um, 657 starts plus three as substitute. Um, died at the age of 81. Um but yeah, obviously an absolute Villa legend, um, playing playing the number of games that he played. Um, yeah, obviously really sad news. Wait, you, you're not going to believe this, Rich. Um, I, I zoned out for literally about 30 seconds. Who died? Charlie Aitken. Okay, is he uh, a... Villa's uh, record? Villa's record appearances. Uh, 17 years at the club, 660 appearances. Um, and he, he represented Villa in three divisions, also played in the FA Cup, the League Cup, the Charity Shield and the UEFA Cup. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, died died at age 81. Rest in peace. I, I, I can't say I knew him um, or I, yeah. I knew much of his career, but um, yeah, another whole ender in the sky. And yeah, condolences to his family. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Villa legends. Um, and yeah, hopefully we give him a... I don't know if they would have done it. I don't know if they did a minute silence or minutes applause today, but you know, if they didn't, then hopefully, um, the next hopefully one, yeah. the next home game. Um, we'll leave it there, Sam. Um, brilliant, brilliant show again. Thank you, everyone, if in the comments. We won't be doing a uh, fan swarm tomorrow because I'm at uh, at my family and I can't. I don't think I'll get away with doing another podcast on another evening. So we will be back though later on in the week for um for talking tactics with gareth reflecting on today's game and then match preview for forest i did see door on tour uh in in the chat as well so thank you for joining the chat mate i'll happily go on your podcast later on this week as well so catch up catch up uh, catch me on that one as well um thank you everyone in the chat um thank you everyone for watching do please hit the like button if you haven't already on your way out hit the subscribe button help us on the road to 3k and yes, get your McGinn um, celebrations like Sam is doing off to a tee. And as always, remember, we all follow the villa. Thanks, everyone. Oh, oh.